What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovahkiin and welcome back to Let's Play Mutant Year Zero. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. The previous vid is part 1 of Lux's side quest and there we retrieved his sanctum key from the unenlightened. Now we're back here at the Castle of Light to finish his quest. So let's just jump right in. Bring the key back to me, my intrepid warriors, so we may once again shine light from this blessed cathedral of hope. Bring the key back. Bring the key back. We got Lux's key. Should we give it to him or give it to Prip back home? A promise is a promise, and we promise Lux. A stalker's word is her bond. How about we take the key and unlock this little sanctum ourselves? See what's inside. If you enter Lux's room, You've practically chosen to return the key, which forfeits all potential EXP from the ghouls on this map. And that choice is for fucking wimps. I came here for a fight. So instead of taking Salma's advice, I'm gonna go with Pharaoh. Use the key to find out what's inside his sanctum. for the wheels? Hard to see. It's so hard to see. Here, let me help you. I can't stop now. I see the light of the ancients on the horizon. I'm almost there. Then I will be with the ancients in space for a million lifetimes. I would say these people are nuts. They're not nuts. They're hypnotized. He must be using his mind control to force these people to power his lights. Okay, fun time's over, people. You've been hypnotized. Wake the hell up and get out of here. Oh, the itty-bitty lights are so pretty. Do you think these were important to Lux? I have heard of these. They were used in ancient religious ceremonies related to mass consumerism. Once you get out through that door, raise yourself for a whole lot of pain, cause Lux will turn aggro and command his entire ghoul army to attack you. Now I ask, why would you even put your squad in that situation? Enemies coming from all directions and you're gonna be trapped like rats. That's just absolutely stupid, right? To remind you again. This is his very high mode. And I have to employ very tedious guerrilla tactics as much as I can to survive this mode. I said that I came here for a fight, and I did. But it should be on my terms, owning full control of the battle so to speak. So how do you do that? Simple. Step 1. Just fast travel out of here. And I'ma go back to the Ark and drop by it Prips quickly to unlock the Butcher Artifact skill. Well, look what the Zone Wolf dragged in. Good to see you. Although I could have went for Mule, which is part of my build as I've mentioned back in episode 14, my mid-game mutation builds and artifact skills review, I didn't. 
because uh, you might think that you'll need a lot of grenades for this next fight, but not. In fact, I'm just gonna use four, a Molotov and three hand grenades. Yeah, it's no time out there. Okay, we're back. And before I go banging on the front door, let me just show you my squad's loadout. By the way, just pause the video if you need more time to look, because I will just explain everything as they present themselves in battle. Now here's the second step to my incredible strat, and it's simple, choke point. There are two potential choke points on this map. The first one is the back door near the path to the unenlightened. Well, actually it's not a good choke point, because our enemies can just fire through the windows or jump off the building to flank you. So uh, just forget me saying it's a potential. My bad. The one and only rather perfect choke point is here, at the front gate, because uh, obviously they can't access you through the fences, so the only thing you need to perfect is the timing of your grenade throws. Anyway, of course, Borman's gonna tank and take all the punishment that enemies have to offer, while Pharaoh and Selma are not gonna take any damage at all. Thus. I only have to use one medkit in the end. By the way, Borman's gonna be slightly exposed as well to lure enemies out exactly where I want them to be. Alright, enough talk and just witness the brilliance of this grand battle. Careful, stay back! Molotov in the hole, just to slow down their advance. Anyhow, Pharaoh is now armed with the 666 sniper rifle that I bought fully upgraded from Iridia in the previous episode. Like Magnus, Lux has Chain Lightning, Telekinesis Shield, and Puppeteer. Yes, fucking Mind Control too. But uh, he's a bit stronger than Magnus because he can also revive his KO goals, even if they're far away. And that's what he just did with this Pyro. <laughs> And that 
that's exactly why Selma is wearing the pyro armor. No damage at all. Now's the beginning of the end for these dumb-ass ghouls, who managed to foolishly clump themselves together. After Salma's tree hugger, a pair of hand grenades. This is actually the first time I will use stone skin. I just waited for that last hunter to come down and join the group. And with the police armor equipped on Pharaoh, the third and final hand grenade is guaranteed to land deep inside reaching that hunter. Finally, the Helm of Wisdom did its job of making Borman godlike against Brain Boys, like Lux here. skip Pharaoh's turn and do Borman the honor of a kill shot. just one man. Now imagine a group of Luxes. That's the Nova Sect. The odds are against us, yeah? But we're brave. We kick ass, and we don't have heads like moldy muffins. 
Are you with me? Just as I'd planned. Precisely, old woman. Couldn't have said it better myself. And that is how you make things easy. Let's see what's inside. Okay, as promised, this map's loot recap. And that is all there is for now, thanks for watching. Also check out other videos from Sabbath Fan Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next vid. Peace out, y'all.